gorgeous souls and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me for another one of my videos today. So today's video is a podcast episode from my podcast, Spiritual Queen's Badass Podcast, which is available on Spotify, iTunes, Anna Carson, anywhere that distributes podcasts. Today's interview is with the incredible Bob Doyle, who is from Rhonda Burns' The Secret Movie. So Bob's work on law of attraction and neuroplasticity has been featured for many, many years in The Secret and in his work as well. Um, and I had the pleasure of interviewing Bob here on this YouTube channel a couple of years ago now, where we covered his Law of Attraction teachings. And in this podcast episode, we talk more on neuroplasticity, rewiring the brain, how our mind and subconscious does impact our manifesting. We talk about inner child work. We talk about how we can work through limiting beliefs and fears. Now, this topic absolutely fascinates me and interests me as you all know. And Bob will also be featuring in some of my work very, very soon, which I'm so excited to share with you later in the year. So I really hope you're going to enjoy Bob and I's conversation. I absolutely took so much away from this conversation. Bob is such a lovely and just such an intellectual man who knows so much on the law of attraction from doing this for decades. He's an author. He literally lives and breathes the law of attraction. And obviously from being in the secret, his work has been profiled so much over the years. So I really hope you're going to enjoy this podcast episode. Please do let me know your thoughts and your biggest takeaway from this interview of Bob in the comments below because I would love to hear what your thoughts are and I reply to them all. So without further ado, let's get started with Bob's interview. So thank you so much guys for joining me for another one of my Spiritual Queens Badass podcast episodes. I am so, so excited to have a returning guest to the podcast today. He hasn't come on the podcast before, but he has been on my YouTube so when Bob got in touch to come on the podcast, I absolutely had to say yes, because he's working on some amazing new work, which I am super excited to learn about today and dive into you with you all here on the podcast. So Bob Doyle, if you don't know, is best known as a featured expert in the film and book, The Secret. He now focuses his coaching and training on neuroplasticity and your ability re to rewire your brain so that you can literally become the person who creates the results you want in life without having to adopt an unusual belief system. So welcome to the show, Bob. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's good to reconnect after all of this time. I know we were saying before it's been about four years, isn't it? But what yes, four and years? And yes, a lot of life has occurred, hasn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, one question, which I always love to ask guests here on the podcast when they come on is, when did you spiritually awaken? What's your story? And would you class yourself as spiritual? Yeah, I think I, I so I guess I my definition of spiritual is, is basically honoring the energetic nature of the universe. So all things when I talk about energy and this ocean of energy, just the energy that is everything that to me is sort of spirit without any sort of dogma or you know what I mean? Like there's there's a when you think of spiritual, you can think of New Age bookstores and, and various belief systems and stuff like that. And that's not the kind of spiritual I am. My awakening actually took place. This is a ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous, but this was in 1990 and I'm holding a cigarette lighter and I don't even smoke, but it was I bought it at a, at a uh, drugstore or a gas station or something because it had this sort of holographic sticker around it. Now, back then, these were a new thing where, you know, you it reflects the light and it looks like a hologram. And I'm looking at this thing and I'm twisting it around in my hand and I'm looking at all the colors. And I just had this like awakening to everything as energy on a whole other level. Like I was contemplating the energy it took for that light to get to my eyes, the energy of the thought process, the energy of the everything. Like it was just this massive sort of download. And so for the next 10 years, I was kind of just, you know, journaling my way or self introspection. What does that mean? And what's the implication of that? And what am I going to do with this? You know, so that was like the beginning of it. And it took a good 10 years before it started to gel. And then finally sort of all came together in this explosion of the law of attraction and, and all that that implied. And that, you know, that's when I jumped into the work with some focus. Amazing. And isn't it funny how one situation like that, literally, like you say, with the cigarette packet changed everything for you. And what were you doing before this career wise? Were you always kind of in self development? Or was it? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, no, my my career goal was always radio and broadcasting and just to be a goofball on the radio and do funny voices and just try to entertain. That was really all I knew that from a very young age. And so I did that the first what seven years or so of my post college life. 
Um, I, I did, you know, broadcasting, but it just wasn't, it, it didn't end up being the creative outlet that I wanted it to because I was in a major market and very low on the totem pole. And I'm just like, I know what drives me is creative self-expression. If I am not expressing creativity in some form, I start to feel just very compressed. And I think that's true for a lot of people. I really think that most people are in angst and worry and stress because they haven't figured out a way to express what is in them. They feel held back. They've got limiting beliefs. They're worried of being, about being judged. They think all that nonsense that's going on in our head that tells us why we can't go do something. I think I got off the rails a little bit there, but that's that's where my passion in all of this lies. So broadcasting and hiding from people was really my first goal. But then when I had my aha moments around this and started sharing it just because I was interested in it, then you know I started interacting with people more, but really the secret was the big turning point for how I was gonna do this because once the secret happened, I really couldn't hide anymore. You know, I couldn't just hide behind my digital program and, you know, like I was being asked to go talk and that kind of stuff. And I wasn't sure I wanted that, but I did it and, and who knew, I really like people, but I still honestly prefer virtual things. I'm a broadcaster at heart. I still do a lot of broadcasting. I have a whole other life where I'm just a goofball online and I'm not, and I'm doing none of this work. I'm, I'm just being silly because I have to, you know, I have to get that out. But, um, but I found a way to marry all of those past experiences into how I'm doing it now, which is through live streaming and kind of broadcasting my teaching in a way that's fun and creative. Mm. And it's really interesting you share this because from obviously interviewing like over 200 people on this podcast now, you know, I really have heard a lot of backstories and a lot of people's backstories have been very similar, like TV, broadcast, press, media, and mm. they've just sort of like wanted to hide behind the spotlight a little bit and just work behind the scenes or maybe they have been on, you know, in front of the camera before. And then when they step into, you know, their purpose as such and take that leap with creating a self-help business or or, you know sharing their teachings with the world it's like they've had that preparation as such but I really love that you said you know you honor both of your passions because I think a lot of people maybe think that you just have to do one like your purpose is to serve people with spirituality so you should do that and you know not have that fun side to you as well so I really like that you do that because you know that is your purpose as well I'm sure it is I had to do it after the secret I got kind of caught in a wedge that I created that I had to be Bob Doyle from The Secret, whatever the hell that meant. Mm -hmm. But I had an idea of what I thought the world expected of me, and it did not include the goofiness that I wanted to do. But so that was a couple of years of trying to figure out who I wanted to be. But then when live streaming came around, when Periscope happened, and I could just instantly connect with real people, that really awakened the beast in terms of like, hey, I can have fun with this. I can do it my way. I can be me and not this Bob Doyle from the secret person, you know, and knowing that I was going to shake, shake it up a bit. I mean, I've definitely had people say, what are you doing? You know, people who have an expectation of who I'm supposed to be, like if I'm supposed to be like Bob Proctor or Jack Canfield or any of these other people, well, I'm not those people, not by a long shot. We have a similar message. I have a totally different way of teaching it. And I'm going to attract a very specific type of person who wants to learn it in a very specific way. And, and I got more joy out of the work I do when I got focused on that and being okay with not everybody's my freaking tribe. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a, there is a particular group of people who, who will resonate with me. And if I'm going to find joy in this work, if I'm going to keep doing it at all, because there's a million other things I could do, mm -hmm. you know, but, but there's, but this work does call to me. It is a message that means a ton to me. And, and whether it's through the law of attraction or through neuroplasticity, however people get there to do what they need to do to become the person that gets the results in the life they want, that is what I'm here to facilitate however I do it. Exactly. It's so true. Like you've got to do it in your way, in your own style, with your energy, because that's what makes you unique. And amen to that. I agree with it. And I think, you know, a lot of clients have said to me over the years, oh, I feel like I should be doing what you're doing. Emma. I feel like I should be doing what other people are doing online. And I've certainly fallen into that trap as well. We all have. And I think it's just a great reminder of your message is unique. Yes, we're all singing off the same hymn sheet, but how you deliver that and your energy and what you bring to the table is going to be unique to you. And, you know, the right people will love that. There are people for everybody. And the more people that are teaching, you know, there's 7 billion people in the world, you know, they're going to want someone to resonate with. So I love what you said, because it's really true. So you have teach the law of attraction for many years now. That's what we know and love you for. So what has encouraged this pivot in your work? How how did this come about? Walk us through it. 
Yeah. So 20 years of teaching law of attraction, which implies it's a lot of energy conversation, it's vibration, it's resistance, a lot of sort of metaphysical talk. And then there's all these techniques, there's vision boards, there's lists, there's visualization, there's just all these, so much to get confused about. And, and I'm sure you see it. I mean, you are deep in the law of attraction conversation. People have more freaking questions than answers. And it's all about the law of attraction. What about the questions about who am I? Who do I want to become? Why is this important to me? What I found is that people were so focused and fascinated with the law of attraction because of how whatever, you know, the secret and genie and it just, you know, it appeals. It's very appealing that they, they want to get it right. And they're so focused on that. And they're beating themselves up if they don't get it right or if it doesn't, why doesn't it work? So, ugh, right? Like their attention, their mental energy and attention is all in the wrong place. It's like if we focused on gravity so that we could, so that the glass will drop, the glass will drop, just let go, right? We don't need to know. We really don't. And this is from someone who felt like I, you need to know. Like I, the whole first part of my career was teaching the science of it. So that because I thought if people just get that it's a thing, then they'll have results with it, because that's what happened for me. But that but, but but what I'm seeing is that's not really how it plays out. People will post inspirational quotes for decades and still not have the life they want. You know, so what I realized is, where, where, where is reality really created? At what moment in time is reality created? Well, it happens in the moment that you give the moment meaning your brain processes the input that's happening and you give it meaning and you create your experience in that moment. So it's all about how you're processing information. So what determines that? It's your freaking brain and how it's wired and programmed. So, and it's all different for everybody. That's why we can all have different versions of the truth. We're all looking through a different lens. So, so what I had my aha moment a few years ago was that if last, if transformation is truly going to last, like where you just effortlessly manifest, that means you have to be on autopilot, something different than you're being on autopilot now, because all of your autopilot behavior and wiring and meaning making is driving you into a particular, into particular action or lack of action because of the meaning you're making. So if your wiring isn't serving you, meaning it doesn't, it doesn't move you into the action, you know, you need to take to be the person who's going to attract all these things you've got on your vision board, then you need to get in there and do some rewiring. Like it has to, like your brain literally has to change and which takes time to do and, and, and persistence and a lot of consistency and a ton of inspiration on your part to do it intentionally. But we can do it. That's the beauty. And so just that, that, that like realization that we, can, we have direct access to our brain. We don't have to go through all of these processes and techniques and hoops and understanding and belief systems and all that. All we have to do is send new information than what, we're, than what we're sending on autopilot. We have to recognize our autopilot, see how it's not serving us, and say, what do we want to replace that with? Because our brain is ready to change. So my work is about helping you identify how you want to change it, and then put a process into place that you will do every day to start the rewiring process. Very scientific, based on exactly how we learn everything. There's nothing woo-woo about it. It's just like you're going to have the accountability and the process to do it. It's what your brain does all the time on autopilot. We're constantly changing our brain. I'm just here to help you do it intentionally. Mm. And it's so, it's so important, this work, because this is exactly the problems that I ran into on my manifesting journey. And, you know, I found the law of attraction six years ago now, and I watched The Secret, I read the books, I did everything, you know, the sort of like law of attraction basics, so I got all the gear. And, you know, I had successes, my life started to change around, I really improved my health, my, you know, my mental health and things like that. But the really big things that I wanted to manifest there were blocks there, there were clearly blocks there. And I didn't know what to do with that because the information wasn't really out there. So what I've actually dedicated a lot of my journey to is the inner work and is rewiring exactly like what you say, because I've seen so many results and transformations with that, because I'm like you say, changing my energy, changing my frequency to align to that version of myself who has those desires. And there was a lot of inner work there. There was beliefs around worth. There was beliefs, you know, inner child's work around and beliefs and um, conditioning that I picked up as a child and I think a lot of the people who find the secret I always say like the secret's fantastic because it appeals to so many people they find it and they're like wow this sounds amazing give me some of this and it appeals right. to the ego in a way because it's like wow I could just have all this stuff great whereas when you actually get on the path you then realize 
oh wow okay there's some blocks here there's some fears there's some patterning and conditioning here which is stopping me from manifesting this so I'm all for this conversation, Bob, because I think it's so, so important. So your work focuses now on neural plasticity and brain rewiring. So yeah. how does this link to the law of attraction and what is neuroplasticity? Well, so neuroplasticity is just the ability for our brain to change. The fact that we can change the structure, grow new neural pathways, create all new ways of being. And, and we've done this our entire life. You know, we were a clean slate when we were born. And we just said yes to everything. And our brain was just growing these pathways because we were getting the same information, no assessment, no evaluation, just yes, 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 yes to everything. And then as we grow older, we get a little bit more critical about what we're letting in and so on. But anyway, we're programming ourselves and, and because our brain is ready to do that. And certain life events happen, which can cause dramatic rewiring in people, a traumatic event or whatever can happen fairly quickly. But for the most part, people are just on this autopilot rewiring as life just brings them new things. They just, again, they're just taking it in. They're not necessarily critically thinking through things. They're just... It's just going on autopilot now, and then they get wired. So, and then they, and then that's again, that's like I said, this is the lens through which they see the world. This is their truth, their truth, their unshakable truth, not an opinion. It's their truth. And it's just as valid as your truth, because your truth is also just your wiring and the meaning you're making. So it's again, it's just like we have the ability to change our brain just by giving it new information intentionally instead of just letting the autopilot go. Now, how that serves the law of attraction is just like I was saying, it's going to the law of attraction is responding to what energy and all of that stuff. That, but that comes from who you're being. You are taking action in the world so that the rest of the world can respond. It can't just all be in your head or on your vision board of visualization. That stuff is there so that you can see and feel what it's like to be that person so that you will get up from that free concession and go be it. Try on that new behavior. Get the new results. Sometimes the feedback is going to be not what you want, but it's okay. You learn. It's just what you have to do is you make you make your goal, your vision, non-negotiable. Just like when you were learning to walk, that was non-negotiable. And you didn't say, oh, I guess the universe doesn't want this for me when you fell down a few times or any of that stuff. You just kept going. Same with every other critical thing you need to learn in life. There's discomfort. There's making mistakes. There's getting, you know, all of it. But somehow when it comes to personal development, we just want it. And it needs to take however long it said on the package how that it's going to take seven days, 30 days, whatever, it just doesn't work that way. You can't, a person cannot predict how long it's going to take for a person to rewire because they've got their network of stuff, so many things to untangle, right? And it's a constant discovery, but if you're committed to doing it, you can do it. And, and it, but it starts with that vision of who do you truly want to become mm, and, and why? Yeah, like, why do you want to become that person? Yes. Because I think a lot of the time when people, and definitely in my early days, I did this, when you set an intention, you're like, yeah, it'd be so awesome to have that. But why do you want that thing? How is it going to serve the collective? Why do you want that thing? How, you know, how is it going to change your life? And I think when we can really think about our why, it changes a lot, because then we really look at why we're manifesting and the why motivates us as well. Absolutely, our why keeps us going, but yeah. we need that why. And this is why I feel like you should focus first on who do you want to be truly the best version of you and decide what that person wants. Because a lot of times, if a person watches The Secret, for example, and they're struggling in their life, their list of desires is probably going to be all about solving this huge problem they have. I got to get out of debt. They're focused on all this, this yuck rather than a more empowered version of themselves. Like if you didn't have that yuck, who would you be? Mm -hmm. And then what would they want? They wouldn't want to be rescued by some million dollars thing. They've already done that. Like, so it's, it's, it's who, who do you need to be starting right now? I mean, really so much of my work is assessing that gap, helping a person realize what, what care, what just traits do they need to take on that their future self will have mm. that they could, they could take on right now. Maybe it's just a little bit more integrity, doing what you say you're going to do. Maybe it's being on time. Maybe it's taking a little bit more self-care, all of these things that do not require for the end result you have in mind to take place before you can do it. And in fact, it needs to be the other way around this whole, there's too much magical thinking in the law of attraction conversation where people are thinking, well, if I just visualize it, if I feel like I have it right now, then it's just going to appear. But if it appears to you, this unevolved, not ready for it person, I promise you, you will not keep it. 
Mm -hmm. You have to become that person so that it just naturally comes to you. We're not trying to strong arm the universe into anything. We're just going with the natural flow. We have a natural desire and a passion within us. It's there for a reason. That's the people just got to know that you have those desires for a reason. The universe truly, if it wants anything, it wants you to have that. That's why you're born with it. The only thing stopping you is we were also built with this incredible ability to, so we're, we're built to be programmed. However, we got programmed from the outside with a lot of limiting crap. And that's what we're trying to untangle now as adults. But if we commit to doing it, we don't have to untangle all of it, but just the stuff that is keeping us from taking that critical action, writing that book, making that phone call, starting that business, beginning or ending, a, you know, all of those things, those conversations that we just keep talking ourselves out of doing it. It's not for me. It's too big. I failed before, whatever. That's all just wiring. None of it's true, but it seems so true. But when you can wake up to, wow, that's just wiring. When you can really get, it's just a program. And I have the ability to create a new program starting. Sorry, I hit the microphone. Starting right now, I can create a new program and I just have to feed it the same. I have to feed it with the same intensity and the same consistency or more than I'm doing on autopilot, which takes a great deal of awareness. Mm, it does. It does. And like you say, it's that internal reflection of who do I want to be? How do I get there? And sustainability is so key with manifesting because this is why I wrote my second book because I manifested what I wanted and I wasn't in the right place to sustainably keep it. I had yeah. trauma underneath there. I had limiting beliefs under there. I had so much inner child work I had to do that the very thing I wanted more than anything, when it arrived, I was not in a place to receive it. So therefore, you know, it didn't stay in my life. So I was forced to then do that inner work and really look at, you know, why I couldn't keep that manifestation or why it wasn't the right time for me so that actually in this phase of my life now I'm like thank god I didn't get that a couple of years ago oh, yeah yeah and that's that's the god. beauty that's the beauty of being able to see that and trust that it's it's there's some divinity to this and sometimes you just need to learn these lessons mm. you, you just need to if you're ever going to be that person you have to have the experiences so you you turn those experiences into something that you're grateful for like the more of those experiences you can have the faster you can have them the faster you'll evolve to where you need to be but trying to avoid mistakes or avoid discomfort will absolutely slow down you need to plow through those comfort zones like crazy and make your quote unquote mistakes but yes you you learned a very valuable thing there it's that being you've got to be that person and it, because what happens is all the inner child work and all the work we have to do the result of that that that, that work, it results in action. So because you need to work on these things or resolve these things, you're not taking action. You're not saying the thing. It all results in outer stuff that's very practical. And that this is why, again, I like why I'm so focused on this conversation of neuroplasticity and brain science is because there is a lot of sort of energy and even, dare I say, woo-woo behind all of this. It all shows up very practically. So And there's no debate about neuroplasticity. There's no debate that the brain can change. It's very clear. We, we change our brain every day, every time we learn something new and retain it. So it's, so there's nothing to argue about. There's nothing to get confused about. There's no like, but what about this? What about no? There's none of it. It's just such a nice, direct, easy for the people who can just get that and are, and will allow it to be simple without getting it. Yeah. But the law of attraction and the energy and the, uh, all of that is awesome but don't let it slow you freaking down. It's not, it's not important that you understand it all. All you need to know is that this brain of yours is the lens through which you see the world and you have direct access to changing that lens so that you can really create the experience you want without worrying about, without even worrying about your vibration, dare I say. Mm. And I think like a lot of the time, the problems occur when we're looking on the outer of being like well my manifestations aren't turning up but I'm doing this and nothing's happening I'm repeating this mantra 50 times a day and nothing's happening what's happening and it's like well actually if you turn the focus inwards all the answers are there the answers aren't always out there in the physical there yes. are books there are places the, to help you <laughs> the why isn't it happening is is that and I'm not going to say this is a hundred percent of the time but a large percent of the, of the time the people who are saying that are the same ones who are not taking the being action. Mm -hmm. I've, I'm doing the meditations. I've done the release work. I've done all this stuff and it's, it's not happening. Are you happening? Mm -hmm. 
That's what needs to happen is you, you need to happen. And then the universe has something to work with, mm -hmm. but you have to go out there and display, I am this now so that this person can respond to you differently than they ever have before. So that this opportunity can present itself. You can't just hide in your room and go, I'm, why isn't it happening? Why aren't people knocking on my door? They don't know you exist. Go tell them, go be that person. All of this work, all of these rituals, they need to move you into action. And if they're not, you need a new ritual. I love it. <laughs> it's so true. I love it. And I hope people listening, you know, will relate to that as well and understand where we're coming from and be like, yeah, actually, this does resonate. This does make a lot of sense. So how can we stretch our energetic comfort zones so that we can literally allow more of what we want to, into our life? Well, it is just taking that uncomfortable action. So, I mean, that's it. That's how we stretch. We do things we've never done before, period. So if we want to be this person and that we know there's a behavior or a way of being or a response, just something that's different than what we're doing now, it's going to seem uncomfortable to do it. But you have to do it and experience the discomfort because the more you do it, then it will become more comfortable. We all know this to be the case with new things. It's uncomfortable at first. You do it a lot. It becomes more comfortable. So, but it it comes from the doing, not the thinking about it. But I will say that visualization in our brain again a very powerful tool for visualizing the doing of it. We can really in our minds rehearse it over and over, and that's really a part of our work. You know, the work that I do is having people on a daily basis run this scenario of who they're being and, and all the different than how they have been so they can try it on and experience the feelings because you can rewire yourself like that but it still needs to translate because now you've rehearsed it you've seen it in your mind you've felt it in your body how i'm going to be when this situation shows up but now when that situation shows up you have to do it but you've rehearsed it you know at least some action to take and then you get the results you get and then you go from there but that's how you move through your energetic comfort zone doing it amen and i think as well like i always think you know looking back through my life and looking at other people's lives having interviewed them nothing good's ever come from staying in your comfort zone something amazing that's happened to them has always come when they've stretched that comfort zone and they've been like do you know what i'm gonna go do this i'm gonna push myself i'm gonna conquer a fear i'm gonna you know try something new and i think it's just so important because when we're trying something new even if it's something tiny like changing your hairdresser or um, changing what color shirt you're wearing if you always wear the same sort of thing something as simple as that can create a ripple effect where you're opening the the space as such for new energy and I think it's important that we do this regularly and make even just small changes it doesn't have to be like I'm going to go and travel across the world and bungee jump you know it, it can just be something minor in our sort of daily routines and habits that's absolutely right. It does not have to be this major thing. You can try on little change just to see it work. And then you can, you know, again, you can expand your vision. But again, I, what I invite everybody to do is really dare to inspire yourself with a vision. Like, because a lot of people don't because they figure it's never going to happen. It seems too big. It more depresses them, you know, to dream big. It just seems out of the realm of possibility. It seems unrealistic. But the more you do it, the more comfortable you will get. Mm. This is a way to expand your energetic comfort zone, if you will, but also to build new wiring to support a greater vision. The first time you think of something really huge, yeah, it's going to be weird and uncomfortable. Duh, of course. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything like it's too big for you. It doesn't, there's no truth about any negative about that. It's just like, oh, this is a new thought. I don't know how to experience this yet. It seems I don't, I have a lot of questions, but then you just keep doing it and keep having it and keep having it and keep having it and keep having it. And then before you know it, especially if you're seeing yourself being in this scene, you, these behaviors will show up in your everyday life. That's how you manifest stuff intentionally using the power of your mind and visualization, all of these things attributed, you know, that are associated with the law of attraction. These are all, yes, these are the techniques, do them, but they have to move you into action. Mm, absolutely. So what are your top tips or processes for beginning the rewiring process then? Well, that it's becoming aware. I mean, that you have to become aware of and own your own autopilot wiring. And that's going to, I think it's going to take levels because there's going to be some stuff that you say, oh yeah, I automatically respond like that. I guess that's autopilot wiring. And then there's other going to, there's going to be other things that you're just blind to because they're so automatic. They're so your truth. It doesn't occur to you like wiring. And yet it's a disempowering thought yet. It's still 
keeps you from taking action. So learning to be aware on all those levels and really own all of the autopilot wiring to be an astute observer of your own reactions, your own emotional response. And then again, this is all stuff that we teach you to do and give you things to do, but that's ultimately what you need to do so that you can see, okay, this autopilot response, which I think is based in truth and I have evidence for, and I can prove that I should be acting like this is not serving me. It, it stops me from taking action. It stops me from saying what I need to say. It stops me from expressing my creativity. So no matter how true I think it is, it's stopping me. And I now know that this is a program and it's not true. It's just wiring. It just seems true. So how would I like to be in this moment? What's the ideal response I could be having in this moment? I, and just start visualizing that. And part, again, part of our work is to do that ahead of time and at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. So you're not just caught off guard, but, but rehearse these new ways of being. But again, again, you have to say, yes, I am on autopilot. Mm -hmm. To a great degree, we're living in an illusion of free will. We think we're making conscious choices, but those choices are driven by autopilot wiring that is out of our control, seemingly out of our control, and is not always serving our highest good. Mm -hmm. And it's so true. And I love what you touched upon there about the way to do it is integrate it into a morning and evening ritual. It can be something yeah. as simple as that. You know, it doesn't have to take up your whole day. It doesn't have nope. to be a big, big lifestyle change that, you know, it's like New Year's resolutions, isn't it? Where everyone's like, right, I'm going to change everything. I'm going to get down the gym. I'm going to eat healthy. And then by the end of January, they're like, oh, sod that, you know, I did it yeah. for three weeks. <laughs> Yeah, the, the process, the quote unquote work of this, of, of how I work with people is, yeah, this is a short amount of time in the beginning of the day and the end of the day and a couple of little things, not many minutes. However, of course, the goal is that it is integrated into every freaking moment of your life, that you are always aware of your responses. So it it's not just like you, like this, is, the reason transformation doesn't stick for people is because they treat it like a freaking program. I did my 30 minutes a day, but then they go right back to their old patterns and their old ways of thinking, their old triggers and all that stuff. And it's such a slow process that way. You have to bring all of this, you have to bring this into everything you do. You're not going to get it perfect all the time, but being conscious of that. And yes, it's going to be, it's going to seem like a lot at first, but that's because we're being intentional about rewiring our brain. It is a significant thing we're doing. Instead of just coasting through life, being autopilot rewired in ways that may or may not serve us, we're being intentional. So yeah, we're going to feel it, but we've got support systems. We've got tools to make it easier. And mostly we have hopefully created a vision for you, for you that is so inspiring that it's worth all of it. Amen. Love that. Amazing tips. Thank you, Bob. So my last question to you today then is what is one piece of life advice that you would like to leave my listeners with? Wake up. <laughs> Just wake up. Just allow yourself to wake up and, and, and let go of your stories and let go of defending your limiting ideas and beliefs. I know you got proof. I know they did this to you. I know, I know it's a lot of story. And the more you tell it, the more true it's going to be. You have to be willing to tell a different story regardless of whether you think it's true or not. You've, you've, got to, you've got to write a story of possibility. It's not like you're going to have amnesia and forget your old stories, but they don't have to have that impact on you. They don't have to become your truth and define your behaviors. They can be learning points. You can use them for the good of your advancement instead of to the detriment, but you have to wake up. Mm, it's so true. And I love that because like looking back over things that used to really trigger me in my life and after doing different modalities of therapy, um, in a work, things like that, you know, I can look back at really traumatic events in my life and not feel triggered, but actually look at it from a peaceful energy where it's like, okay, you know, that happened, but yes. ultimately it's got me to where I am. It's taught me so many amazing lessons. It's, you know, helped me in my work to share and help people as well. And actually, I don't have to let it control me. I don't have to let it play out that story in my mind because there's a new, there's a new program, a new story there. So it absolutely works, guys. Absolutely works. So Bob, where can my lovely listeners find your work if they would like to know more and explore it? Well, two main places I would send people. Now, we, we were just talking about the importance of knowing your starting point, like recognizing your autopilot behavior. And we have a quiz. It's a 60 second free thing online that people can take to identify their transformation personality type. This is what I've called it. But it basically tells us and them, what are some of the traits 
when it comes to personal transformation that show up in them that can sabotage their results. This, this just shines a light on it so that they can understand so that when that autopilot behavior happens, they can become conscious of it in the moment and then make new decisions. But you have to kind of know when you're on autopilot. So this quiz helps with that. You identify that type, you identify the traits, we give you some ideas on how you can use these to your benefit and so on. So that's at tptquiz.com recommend that. But then just other than that, if you just kind of want to know more about what I'm up to and other ways to work with me, it's meetbobdoyle.com. That's kind of like the, the hub for all things Bob. But other than that, I'm super easy to find with a search just about anywhere. <laughs> Amazing. And I'll put clickable links to Bob's website he's mentioned there in the description below. So you have an easy clickable link as well. But thank you so much, Bob. Honestly, it's been such a joy having you on the podcast, bringing you back onto YouTube as well after four amazing years. And it's great to see the work you're doing and go deeper with this work as well, because I think it will really, really help people. So thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed Bob's interview today and took lots away from this. And as always, if you want to find even more video interviews from my podcast, I have a whole playlist of profile guests, authors, celebrities, all kinds of amazing spiritual folk who have come on the podcast over the years. I have all of their video interviews here on my YouTube channel under my podcast playlist. So do make sure to go and check that out too. So thank you so much guys for watching. I appreciate all your views and likes. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here because I would love, love to see you again soon. Don't forget to leave me a comment in the comments box down below because I replied to them all. And don't forget you can also join my free Law of Attraction support group over on Facebook where you can join myself and other like-minded souls where we talk all things Law of Attraction and spirituality. I hope you have a fabulous week whatever you're up to and I'll see you all in my next video which will be on Friday lots of love